Bulletin rescue operations are still ongoing in Bodija, Ibadan, following Tuesday night's devastating explosion in the Oyo State capital. Three persons have been confirmed dead and 77 injured after the dust in the wake of the destruction settled. Take a look at the report. Well, since yesterday, our security agencies, our first responders, emergency services, and all other relevant agencies have been working diligently as they carry out uh, search and rescue operations. That the preliminary um, evidence that has been gotten um, is indicative that um, for some time, people must have been storing explosives um, in that area. And it is not just fresh. It must have been something that had accumulated for a period of time. The various hospitals concerned in the management of this patient have sent in reports and um, they're all very encouraging. There has been no mortality uh, between yesterday and today. It was only the mortality that was recorded yesterday. And as I speak, the forensic pathologist that we have uh, in the southwest, probably in the well, southern hemisphere of Nigeria, Dr. Eze is carrying out a forensic evaluation of uh, the two patients that were initially uh, taken to him. Chaos and panic gripped the entire neighborhood of Bodija and its surroundings in the late hours of Tuesday as an explosion said to have emanated from a private residence plunged the entire community into turmoil. <laughs> Following this incident, rescue operations have not ceased, with both state and federal agencies working diligently to save trapped victims in the rubble. Excuse me! Press. At the same time, I said, wait, wait! The tales of devastation are evident as residents and families are still in awe of the profound destruction, which has brought buildings down and wrecked intense structural damage in the houses still standing. Or your state governor, Shei Makinde, visited the scene of destruction and afterwards briefed the press alongside his emergency medical team. He assured residents that perpetrators of such acts would not go unpunished. Well, since yesterday, our security agencies, our first responders, emergency services, and all other relevant agencies have been working diligently as they carry out uh, Search and rescue operations. That the preliminary um, evidence that has been gotten um, is indicative that um, for some time people must have been storing explosives um, in that area. And it is not just fresh, it must have been something that had accumulated for a period of time. Chief Medical Director of the University Teaching Hospital is reassuring residents that medical attention for the victims has been intensified to avert additional fatalities. There is no doubt that the devastating effects have left unending memories in the hearts of the affected people. The ANUS is now on government to put in place appropriate measures to prevent the recurrence of such a disaster. Earlier I spoke with journalist David Bello from Ibadan via Zoom and he gave this update. All right, good evening. David Bello is uh, right live here all the way from Ibadan. Now, I can uh, reliably confirm to you that um, since the last time we spoke, rescue operations seem to have uh, continued and have progressed. But thus far, since before we left there, uh, no record of a uh, 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 victim was made. But then again, at some point, the governor came to empathize with sympathizers and also show concern. And while he was speaking and trying to count free nerves, one of the structure collapsed. And uh, that called to a, 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 a point 
the appeal that repeatedly to people, especially sympathizers, empathizers that have been thrown in the scene, that that scene is still a sensitive place. It has been called on off. Now, immediately after that, we had a press conference at the governor's office where the governor gave out some action plan. And part of the action plan was a, a stand warning that everybody, both our structure owners, uh, both our sympathizers, uh, both our residents, and uh, wherever they may be, they should all vacate that environment. Because structures there, even the ones that are currently still standing, they would have to undergo integrity tests for them to ascertain if uh, people can truly go in there. So he cautioned, especially property owners, not to be tempted to go back into their properties with attempts to want to pick one or two valuables. He also cautioned that especially those that um, would want to nurse any criminal mind in an attempt to want to either steal uh, 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 properties of uh, some of the victims, that uh, the police would decisively deal with them. He also told us about the fact that there is all, already a sufficient database, and as such, they can separate uh, some of uh, the hoodlums that would want to attempt to steal properties and then um, the original occupant of uh, that estate uh, or, or that right, uh, uh, street. And yes. uh, reliably now, also, we have been told that uh, arrangement adequate arrangement with hotels and uh, some of our. Uh, uh, the, the rest uh, rest rooms around to accommodate on government accounts and finances uh, some of these displaced people for now. As All you right, can David. see, I am not David, reporting David, from the side. If you are with me, I understand uh, the need for security, especially around the area uh, where the explosion happened. Yes, but then again, are we still sticking to what the governor said earlier with regards to the cause of the explosion? That is the activities um, of illegal miners. Has there been any statement from um, say the police since uh, the unfortunate incident happened yesterday night. Now, interestingly, there was an update today during the governor's press uh, uh, conference. He said emphatically that uh, apart from the fact that it was uh, uh, occupants that were into illegal mining, that they have also uncovered the company that owns the property there. The property was owned by a company that um, rented the uh, property for or bought the property over as a residential while uh, some of uh, the occupants started stockpiling explosive. So that narrative still stands that uh, the, the, the explosion was due to activities or activities of uh, illegal miners and stockpiling of explosive in residential quarters. Okay, thank you very much for that update, uh, David. However, let's talk about the unfortunate victims of this explosion now. We understand that around 70 persons were hospitalized following um, the unfortunate incident on Tuesday night. How, uh, however, what do we know about uh, the condition or their state currently? Are they responding to treatment um, or is there, have we recorded any fatalities? Um, let's hope that we've not. No, according to the official record of the governor, uh, the, those rescued, the, the statistic, the data now stands at 78, 77, 78, because it was 77 yesterday, and one was rescued alive today, making 78, while one, one of the bodies uh, or, uh, from the rubbles was recovered also. So those that are currently being hospitalized are presently in uh, about four or five hospitals across the state. Now, the directive from the governor today is that they are going to harmonize the hospitals and leave it to three hospitals and just three private hospitals and one government hospital. And then they can pay adequate attention to them.